And how are you this morning, this morning? Um, what did I say? Good morning to you all. This is a quick live. I'm not going to be here long. I always say that. But I mean, I'm going to try to keep my word and keep this kind of, you know, just, you know, regular minimum time. My bubba. Oh, he had an appointment today. Um, he's going, oh, bubba, what is it? Huh, baby? Are you okay, Bubba? Good morning, Baker man. How are you, sweetheart? Good morning, Dialogue with Me TV. How are you guys this morning? Hope everything's okay. I got my pot of coffee going. Um, This is actually my second pot, to be honest with you. I get up at 5.30. I could have been gone live, but I've been watching and reviewing some of my uh, videos. Um, I told you I, I reviewed that shit last night. That lion ass just saying. I did watch a little bit of Kev Low. Kev Low is up super early. Kev Low told me good morning. I have to send... Uh, Cash apps because I got that's the only way I can speak to Kevlo because um his chat always blocks me so it is what it is um but I want to see how he was and what he was talking about of course he's still talking about ears I'm just hoping that cooler heads prevail and that that stupid shit gets over with because um I just don't think it's a good look for anybody I meant to get on ears last night but of course I was doing my own live. And I went almost, what, four hours almost? And by the time I got off, ears was gone. So I didn't get to, I didn't get to hit ears panel, but I was going to. And I was just going to tell them, ears, please listen to me. Will you please stop all this? Stuff is getting kicked up, ears. You're better than this. You just turned 40, sweetheart. You got your whole life ahead of you, you know? I don't want to hear you doing nothing dumb, baby. And you got a good job going. Oh, they talking about No Chill Gil. I really don't watch No Chill Gil, to be honest with you. I don't watch too much of his stuff. Dialogue me with me TV has a a strong like for a baker man. But I didn't told you that loud. Told you. I am tired though, you guys. Last night went over a little bit. I try to keep it minimal, but I get to reading them comments and Gil Jones be talking crazy and cutting up. And before I know it, I'm laughing and talking even longer, so. But on this subject, um, I went and watched this stew food. Stew food, um, if you watch this replay, sweetie. I did go and watch, and I heard what you said, and you said exactly what you said. Um, and I think you were respectful. Um, you know? And he took it wrong, as usual. I mean, that's what he does. Um, but he has to realize that he mistreated me. And Mr. Brown, you may not admit that you ever mistreated so far, but you know that you did. Um, you disrespected me time and time again. And that's why we had the exchange that we had. But still, Fu, I did watch it and I did see how you went up there. You were pretty respectful. LOL so far. <laughs> Dialogue with me, TV girl. That's game. You like Baker Man. You don't fool me. You want a taste of that sweet butterscotch. And listen, I don't blame you, Dialogue. 
Look, I don't blame you at all. Y'all see how tight and upset I was last week over my Baker Man. I'm not playing about that. I love me some Baker Man. I get it. I get it. Baker Man is that dude. You know what I mean? Rochelle, hey, sweetheart, good morning to you. I was just watching that crazy live with your crazy self on there with you and Mercy. And I said, oh, Lord, Rochelle, you really got on my nerves that day. Yeah, Dialogue with Me TV, you just got good game. I hear you. I hear you, sweetie. And um, I don't blame you. That butterscotch is pretty sweet. Um, hell, I, you know, Baker Man make me go get a whole bag of butterscotch if I want to. I be thinking about Baker Man while I suck on those butterscotch. I really do. I'm like, ooh -wee. But I got, you know, I don't eat too much candy because I'm on my diet. I know you love me, Rochelle, but, you know, um... Oh, you gonna come? Okay, well, honey, if you come to Texas, let's hang out. I know just the place to go, okay? I'll buy you a drink, Miss Rochelle, and pay for your meal. I don't mind. You come to Texas and you and I meet up, uh, we'll have a meal, you know? And, uh, dang, I don't mind treating you. I don't mind treating you at all. It'll be my pleasure to kind of take you out and kind of show you around. I'll show you downtown Austin, and um, I'll take you around, you know? Take you to the hillside where it's all uphill and big, fine homes. I love to show you around. Yeah. Honey, I'm going to behave, but I want to show Rochelle. I'll take her to dinner. We'll eat. You know, we'll have a good time. Rochelle, I don't mind. But what I do feel, Rochelle, is that um, now you know how I feel about you. I think you're a little too agreeable, but um, and we don't have to talk about that, dude. We can talk about all kinds of stuff, Rochelle. You know, hell, we can go to the little shopping spots that I know where they sell homemade jewelry. That's really pretty and pretty reasonable. Y'all, I don't know. I have the yawns this morning. I don't want to pass them on, but oh my goodness, I've been so sleepy. I think this um this diet kind of got me down, and I think it's this new medication. I feel like it lingers on me a little too long. Um, because once I wake up, I told y'all, I don't need much sleep. You know, I go. I went to bed last night at one o'clock. I'm up by five thirty. That's four and a half hours. And that's really all I need. And then I'm gone for the rest of the day. And listen, I don't take a lot of naps or nothing like that. But sometimes during the day, you know, um, once I get through with uh, the first workload, I can have a, maybe an hour or so before the next batch come in. And that, that gives me, and that's not my break. You know, that's just, that's just me finishing my work and getting things done because I don't like things that linger too long. So. I try to knock out the cases from the night before. Like if I have a few left over, that's the reason I get up so early. So I want to knock those out, clear the day, and then that way I start fresh and new. So yeah. Yes, Rochelle, they dropped me for $50. Um, because uh, just saying is a big liar and want to rope me in with her problem with Melly. That has nothing to do with me. Um, Melly is a moderator over here, as y'all know. He's uh, He moderates pretty good for me. See, if it's like seven uh, here, then it's five over there. So he's probably still asleep or, you know, getting ready for his day. I don't know. But, um Yes, uh, Baker Man, I go to, we have a gym here. Oh, Lord. I got all these damn messages coming in. We have a gym here. And um, I go I go to the gym at my apartment complex for now till I get stronger. Because remember, I had a, 
real problem with walking after I had, after I was in the hospital. That's why I was in the hospital so long, man. Uh, Baker, man, you know, my blood pressure was extremely low. And I had to, you know, blood pressure, is, you know, I like I said, I didn't realize blood low blood pressure <clears throat> was a real thing. But now I know low blood pressure is just as bad as high blood pressure. And when you have low blood pressure, you can barely walk, barely move, um, you know, because blood's not getting where it needs to go and you're tired. You know what I mean? So I really fixed that, and um, I'm still having ramifications from that. Um, I got out the hospital, was it March 7th? So I was in there over two and a half weeks, Baker Man. It took me a minute, you know, I, I told you I was uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy. I know what it's like. And, uh, you know, I know what it's like. That's all I know. And it was rough on me. Yeah, and I feel like with me losing some weight, that's going to get me off this shit. That's why I'm kind of trying to stick to it. Even if I have to eat a Red Robin salad, go out with friends, um, I'll eat that Red Robin salad. Try to, at least. Oh, that was a horrible dining experience. I don't like Red Robin. Um, they can say yum all they want, but I won't be back. Yeah, so um, Red Robin is known for their burgers, and they do have pretty good burgers. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've been there before. Before my diet, I always get my uh, burgers and my. I tell them make my bottomless fries extra crispy, and you know I do my thing. But right now I'm not doing any of that, so I had to have their salad. I told them hold the bacon bits, hold the egg, just hold the cheese, just extra carrots, extra shredded carrots, you know. And um, they gave me what I asked for, but I just wasn't happy with it. And that's why I stopped buying that bag salad. I used to buy those uh, when I first started. I bought those um, salads that were in a bag. And I kind of liked them. But what I realized is it's mostly odds and ends. It doesn't have any really good green leaf. So I started buying my own salad, you know, chopping it up, doing it myself. Because at least that way I get the best part, you know. And I can pick what I'm getting, you know. That's why, I, you know, they have collard greens in the bag and stuff, but I usually pick out my collard greens myself, and I don't care. I, you know, yeah, I'm still vegan and angry. Sure am. Um, yeah. But, busted life, you deserted me, Kwame. You dropped me like a bad habit. When you realized I wasn't for the fuck shit anymore, you dropped me down. And let me tell you something else. I saw stew food. All Stufu was saying was when you go over, um, if you're going to go join the celebration with um, Garrick, which I might do. I mean, Garrick came over. He invited me. It's nice to be invited to something. You know what I mean? I might just go to Garrick and then, you know, be invited. I know it's going to pay off, Mr. Baker, man. I, listen, I've lost 25 pounds so far, Baker, man. And like I said, I, you know, I don't look like I've lost 25 pounds. But um, I know I said, if I lost 25, then I can lose 50. If I lose 50, then I can lose 75. And that's the way I'm looking at it day by day, um, minute by minute. You know, I'm taking it like that. Um, and um, that's, hey, fatty. Good morning, sweetheart. How are you? Good morning, good morning. Hope you guys are having a great morning. It's Tuesday morning. We're going to go live. We're going to talk more politics tonight. I'm trying to stay away from that beef. I will have an opinion um, as usual, but that's not going to be my whole show. And what I'm not going to do, I'm not letting that waste of time Blizzy come back. Blizzy, you are a energy drainer. You are a uh, killer of content. I don't know what it is with you. 
why you're so delusional about California, but you're out of your mind. And there's too much, there are too many studies. If you're so smarty and smarty arty, there are too many studies, but just besides the census, sweetheart, that will tell you people are having a mass exit of your, of your state. Okay. No one wants to be bothered with Cali and your commercials to bring people there are lackluster. They put superstars in like people care about celebrities anymore. Celebrities are human beings and a lot of them have weird, fucked up lives that nobody cares about, Blizzy. And a lot of your celebrities do not live there. I don't know why you're so braggadocious, but um, it's kind of strange to me. But I've seen your Skid Row state and I know what I'm talking about. And I've been to multiple areas in Cali. Like I said, San Francisco, went to the Bay Area. Um, Inglewood. I've been all over Cali. And it's trashed out now, nigga. You don't have to like it, but it is a truth. And then a lot of them try to move down here. Y'all know how they come in here and they do that Um, when they rob in a group. It's a big group of people and they want to go rob a place. They tried that in Texas. You know what they got? Hot bullets. And they got the memo that we don't play that here. You try to say that our state's like your state, you a damn lie. Because you can't steal $900 worth of, de worth of shit in Texas and not go to jail. So you're lying. But it is what it is. I mean, people have to protect their neck and they got to protect their whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. Baker Man Jr., I like Kev Lowe. I don't really know how he truly feels about me. But I'm organic with my love for Kev Lowe. I don't try to hide how I feel about Kevin, okay? Um, I like Kev Lowe, and I have for the longest. My problem with Kev Lowe is he lets his chat, that's what I've talked about, he uh, panders to his base. Bo. Oh, Bubba. You like being right up under mama sometimes. I, I love him to death. Y'all know this, but that Bo getting right up under me, it gets to be too much for me sometimes because it's like, Bo, I need to move my legs. I got to get up. You know what I mean? If I get up and try to move into the kitchen and get me something, he's right there at the base because you know he can't come in and he's looking for the sign to let me, okay, can I come in now? It's like, Jesus Christ. You say that, Rochelle, but like I said, I sent him a couple of dollars this morning. I don't know. Maybe it'll buy a cup of coffee, but it's like, Kevlo, I shouldn't have to cash up you just to say hi to you. I should be able to chat in your chat and speak to you. I haven't done anything to you. It's weird that they get to run your shit like they do. And uh, it's just disappointing to me. No, because Baker Man, Baker, uh, Baker Man, Kev Lowe's a, he's been a bigger dude. I think Kev Lowe is sexy the way he is. I swear, I swear to God. Everybody moving to uh, Florida and Texas. And, you know, y'all, if he would just admit that, y'all the chosen one, if he just admit that, he'd be all right. Um, we had over... Last year, we had over 300,000 Californians. This year, we're already over 100,000. And we're only in April, people. That I don't know if people realize, but 100,000 people is a lot of people. All right? It is. And by the end of the year, we might have at least uh, four or five more thousand, 100,000 that actually make it here. People are leaving California. He doesn't want to admit it. But you've outpriced regular people. Like I said, you may have a good job. But just because you have a good job doesn't mean you're always going to have a good job, sir. They lay off and outsource in this country all the fucking time. You know how many jobs I had that were good jobs that got outsourced? Shit, nigga. Give me a break. But I, I'm not here to talk about that idiot because uh, Blizzy's an idiot to me. And I, I see and he's a time waster. So it is what it is. 
But yeah, I like I like me some Kev Law, and I try to show him that. Um. Yes, dialogue with me TV. There has to be a line. Yeah, Kelly. Kelly is going into shit. When you see a whole street that's nothing but homeless people, I'm not talking about no little block people. I'm talking about down a whole fucking side street. There is nothing but tents, and then there's a place where they have nothing but cars. People that just sit there and park. And they let their car seat down. And they sleep. This is not a joke. People are hurting over there. And this is why I'm tired of America throwing all our money all around the world, but where we need it the most, and that's at home. Take care of your people first. Dialogue with me, TV. Do you understand how sad I felt when I saw those people cheering on that bullshit from Kev Lowe? It's like, do y'all care about him at all? You say you support the young man. You're in here a hundred and something deep. No one can say stop. That's why I said the, I said the same thing about Kwame's chat. Like, you'd rather sit here and agree with this crazy nigga and watch him roll off the cliff than sit there and say, listen, Kwame, enough. Do y'all realize, like I said, I still sent that fool a cash app and I told him, you're better than this. This is after he has me blocked and has talked shit to me, okay? And talk shit about me. He doesn't want to tell the whole truth. And that's why I'm fucking sick of you, Mr. Brown. You don't tell the truth about So Fly. You sit up there and you let people just say whatever about me. And you don't say how much I supported you. This is why I left the fucking bus life bullshit. Because I was tired of you not acknowledging that people actually really support you or wholeheartedly. You think I just give $500 just because? I'm not giving you money because I think we're going to fuck. I'm giving you money because I want you to succeed at your shoe drive and do the right thing. But I'm, I'm over this shit. And like I said, this is why I'm done with it, uh, Miss Rochelle. I won't be back over there. I have no right to go back over there. I'm done with that. Ike, if you say that again, you're out of here. Your family lives in San Diego. I've got family in Cali. And that's why I was trying to tell Silly Blizzy. Um, Cali from the 90s and Cali 2024 are this two huge different animals. And you can't sit up there and tell me that that state ain't suffering. No, he didn't. No, he did not, Baker Man. And you point to where and I'll tell you when. I've never seen him acknowledge that I'm a decent person that actually tried to tell him right. Last week when he was going off the rails, I came in and I cashed at him because I couldn't sit there and listen to him just go on and on talking all that negative shit about actually um, low-key getting hurt or hurting somebody. And I came in there and I cashed at him like $5 two or three times. I tried to tell him, please, you're better than this. Did you hear that? When you hear that chime, that's me, Baker man. When you hear that chime this morning uh, go off to Kev Lowe's phone, that's me, Baker man. That's so fly telling you, telling him good morning. Uh, you know, be positive. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, Joe Mo Rogan moved to Austin. Uh, we have a lot of Californians in Austin. Austin is overrun with Californians because we're a liberal city and we're hilly, okay? Austin has hills, hills, and more hills. You're either going up or you're going down. That's our terrain. And especially one side of the town is very hilly. 
and you can buy a really nice home for three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars in Austin. It's the same home in California will cost you about two million or more that you get for four hundred, five hundred thousand here or less. Okay? And you get nice neighborhoods, HOHs, pools, every every neighborhood pretty much. Really nice neighborhoods. They have pools, they have parks, um, recreation centers, all that. Austin has a lot. Don't move to like um, Round Rock or Georgetown. There's even more of that, okay? Most major nice neighborhoods have pools and they definitely have parks and all kind of shit. All kind of trails in Austin. Austin has, I mean, they have trails everywhere. Nice parks, friendly parks, lots of dog parks. So they have everything like a Californian would just love, okay? 2018 pick, good morning. I, I'm not playing with you, sweetie. I don't know why you think this is a joke. I'm very upset and pissed off. And you're going to make me mad, I'm telling you. Get your ass on with that shit. Rochelle, I live in Austin, Texas, sweetie. Probably then I already told y'all where I live. Hell, the nigga exposed my information. He gave everybody my address last year. Speeding in Georgetown. Oh, careful, speeding in Georgetown. You're damn right, because those racist cops, let me tell you something. You want no racism? Shit. Them good old boys in Round Rock will definitely put your black ass over. And they don't give a damn. They're horrible in Round Rock. 50 moved to H Town. Sure he did. Dallas is an okay place. Um, like I said, the more Californians we get, the more our homeless population uh pop oh God, population moves up. Move to Georgia? No. I don't want to be nowhere near that fool. Or his fucking family. I'm not moving to Georgia for nothing. Well, honey, they're, listen, they are doing mock shutdowns. They're checking, when they start doing this type of shit, Dialogue With Me TV, they are checking the temperature of the people. How docile and weak are these people? Are they just going to let us take them over? Why would they shut down? Like, they have been shutting down major interstates. I'm like, why? No road work, no nothing. Just don't go down this road. So imagine when there's a a major catastrophe uh, and they're telling you don't go down this road. What's going to happen to you? Y'all better start thinking of alternative routes. Get off those main ways and start learning your back ways and your uh, really your backup roads. Because when they get ready to really put full, uh, you know, full plan into motion, a lot of people are not going to be ready. And these people, a lot of these young people, they're just ready for the slaughter anyway. So they're, they're going to, the only people that are going to really fight back are the people that are going to be up in age. And how much can you fight you know, if you're up in age? They know this. They have dumbed down society for a reason. They really have. I love you might like these little names and shit and don't be mad at me, but I I'm over it, Ike. I'm a human being at the end of the day. I have feelings too. I try not to be as emotional as some people uh, just because of the way I grew up. I grew up really in hard, difficult conditions, so I'm not 
as squishy as some people, but at the end of the day, I get tired too. And he's never going to apologize for the fuck shit that he does to me. And I'm just over it. But I want to acknowledge you, Stufu, because I did go back and listen to it. And I was like, damn, Stufu, all you did was say, if she comes, can she just be at peace and not, um, and not, uh, get the fuck shit that y'all do on her all the time? Can she just enjoy Garrick's birthday and maybe send a nigga a $20 shot and vibe and talk without the bullshit? And I think that's fair. I don't see anything wrong with that. But of course, you found fault in it, Mr. Brown, because you're nuts. Oh, well, well, well. That's why Baker Man got you. Baker Man got you, uh, then slams you down hard on the concrete. Just like he should. You don't come in here. Uh, be disrespectful. I think you're just going to rock out. That's not going to happen. Um, I have snipers and they don't play that. And they will time you out for real, Jack. Y'all think it's a game, but uh, I don't think Baker Man takes his job as a game. He's very serious about his shit. And um, he will time you out. He'll get you out the paint real quick. So, careful. Mm -hmm. I tell anybody that comes over here with Baker Man Jr., Please be careful. Please talk like you got some sense because, man, um, he don't play around with you. And he don't, he and he don't even, some of y'all, he don't even warn. He just gets you out the pain. Depends on how you come in. You know, Baker, man, he might give you a little nice warning, but um, sometimes he don't. He just gets you. Um, I don't know if he shamed you or not. Um, I don't know. He didn't slam you, know, Ike. I can see all your comments. Your comments aren't that disrespectful, Ike. It's these other stupid motherfuckers that want to come in here talking about book bags. And they come in here and just talk that crazy shit. Um, I don't know if he's here or not. And I'm not asking for him to come. He can stay where he is, Rochelle. I think that you want us to be cool uh, more than we do. And I'm telling you that at this point, I'm not going to take any more bullshit off that man. He's not my nigga. He's not my man. And I don't have to take anything off of him. I've been putting up with him and putting up with him and putting up with him because a part of me, uh, I feel a little guilty for some of the things I said. You know what I mean? And sometimes when I'm sorry, I don't say, I'm sorry. But what I'll do is, 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 you know, I'll try to have an understanding with you later on. And that's what I've been trying to do. No, I'm not going, but I'm not going over there to have no talk, Baker Man. I'm not going back over to Bus Life. I only went over there today because of what Stufu said on my channel last night. That he went up there and tried to defend me. And I said, oh, okay, because some people say that shit. They say, oh, I'll defend you and I'll do this and that. And they really don't. But I went up there and I heard what Stufu said. And, and Stufu was very direct. He he wasn't disrespectful, but he was like, man, let her rock out. You know, let her, let her come around without the BS. But see, now he's like, well, I can't control the chat. And it's, it's not my fault they're like this. Yes, it is. They see the way you behave and they follow suit. What the hell are we talking about? Rochelle, you want this more than me. And you need to just accept the fact that you are projecting onto me. I think you want it more than I do, Rochelle. And I mean that. Yes, I found the nigga attractive. You can find people attractive that are assholes. That happens all the time. You find, you see these, these chicks, they're fine as hell, but they have bitchy attitudes and they still run after them same chicks because they don't care about her attitude. They want to just get with her. No, we cannot get along. Car carve that make that your last comment. You come in here with that what we doing shit, and you're gonna be out of here. Listen, I understand Baker Man, but Baker Man, 
I want to respect your city, Baker man, and where you grew up. And that's why I tried to uh, say something to Kwame um, uh, with my super chats. I tried to send him messages in my super chats. Please stop this uh, tough talk and shit. They're watching you. You know, I sent those kind of super chats. And I sent them to Kev Low as well because um, I really wanted cool heads to prevail. Um, I like Kev Low and I just don't want nothing bad to happen to that young man. And that's really what I tried to do, Baker Man, you know? So it is what it is. I tried my best to um, be, uh, you know, because I, I know what it is to be hot headed, Baker Man. I grew up in a rah rah, get them, get them family, okay? I know what it is to be hot headed on both ends. Um, and that's why I try not to, that's why I try to say what I said because I, I know that um, in, in the black community and shit, especially when you grow up in a hard community, you can be hard as selling. You don't give a shit. And that switch is in all of us a lot of times. Um, it's called growing up in the hood. We are a uh, uh, tested people, but please don't test us. And, um, you know, uh, what we talking about, uh, that's what I'm telling you. Uh, you come to my yard, or my granny's yard, talking slick. And I remember one lady, old lady, did not like my grandma. She sent, she sent her grandchildren up there to um, try to check my grandma and me. And um, that switch, you don't talk to my grandma any kind of way. What? And before I know it, we were fighting hard in that yard. Then my other cousins, they heard, and they came out, and it was a brawl. But that's because you don't talk crazy to my grandma. What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? That's my monarch. You don't come in here and talk crazy to my granny. Fuck us up with you. And you will get that work. Good morning, Vince the Sniper. See, Vince knows, because Vince is from a really hard place called Oak Cliff. They don't play around over there. You come up there talking that dumb ass shit, we want to see what you're talking about. Lord knows we do. And we can't wait to find out. We're like, oh, really? Oh, it's like that? Oh, good. That's what we want to hear. I mean, my family likes to fight. So, uh, and it's girls, boys, everybody. Oh, you said, what's our grandma? And you see all the eight of them grandkids come out there, various ages. What you say? You call her, what? And it's on and popping. And we are on the ground. It's a brawl. They had to call the cops that day. Um, fuck them. <laughs> they sat on that curb, busted up. Uh, they had to sit uh, like three, four cars. God, to be more careful, these niggas are out of, the, out of there. This was the summertime, too. Oh my goodness, my granny. Y'all stop that now. Stop that now. Y'all gonna go to jail now. Stop all that now. I'm all right, y'all. I'm all right. Nah, no, granny, it's the principal. <laughs> you, we know you all right. You're gonna be all right. But these motherfuckers here, they got to get it, honey. One, two, four, five. I mean, they all jumping off that porch. What you say, motherfucker? You don't know, let the boys get involved. Nigga, what you say? About who? About our grandma? Oh, no. Nah. Did you not know that she hang, that we hang over here uh, in the summertime at all of us cousins? And we finna beat the fuck out of y'all? Shit. The next thing you know. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I was a very scrappy young lady. What you mean? I fight all the time. I would fight now, but I'm older and I don't want charges on me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not going to be under the jail because I fought some stupid bitch. That's why I stay to myself because I, I, and I have uh, friends of, uh, of my family and sisters that I don't fuck with. I have one sister. She has a lot of female friends. I don't like hardly any of them. And when they around me, I try to just, you know, stay to myself because... I know it could pop off. I have this. She gonna sit there and tell me now she's my sister-in-law. Oh no, not my sister-in-law, but she's my sister's sister-in-law. Now we at the baby shower. Everybody knows how I am about my niece. My niece said, "Come on, Annie, let's take a picture." She called her Amy, right? She said, "Come on, Amy, let's take a picture." Why this bitch get up? What? I looked down, I said, what? 
She said she called for her auntie. I said, and that's me. The hell? Deja, my niece looked at me. She said, come on, auntie. She was looking right at me. I looked at the other one. I said, you're not her aunt. <laughs> you her auntie in law, baby. You ain't her auntie in blood. You better go sit your ass down somewhere before we make change. And I looked at my sister. My sister knew. Come, come on, girl. Hold on. Let her, let her and uh, Soulfly take a picture right quick. You better let me and uh, uh, my niece take a picture right quick. Who is you? I couldn't wait. I looked at her and said, mm hmm Because sometimes I don't say shit to bitches. I just look at them. I look at my sister. My sister knows the look. Get this. My sister, my sister knows the look of, come get this bitch. <laughs> she comes and gets some, baby. I ain't playing. Sometimes people say smart shit to you. Be like, you know, I, I was losing weight one time. She said, girl, you losing weight. Girl, you losing weight. <laughs> yeah, you're going you gonna to be out there doing this and try to call herself being funny. Because she didn't know I had a man already. And she was like, yeah, you're going to get out there and finally get you a man. Finally? Bitch, do you know me? I didn't say a word. I just looked at her. She said, <laughs> I'm talking to you, girl. You ain't talking to me, bitch. Because that switch of Skitsy is really close. You finna hit that motherfucker. You better go on. I just looked at her and I looked at my sister. I gave my sister that look. My sister, oh, Lord. She knows my daddy is finna come up right of me. You better go on, bitch. Because, see, you trying to talk slick. I, I just looked at her and looked at my sister. Went and got my drink and I went and sat down. And I just didn't say shit else. But then she came over there. Girl, you just straight up ignoring me a while ago. That's kind of weird. I said, no, because you're talking slick. And that's going to make me mad. Right? I said, I don't like bullshit too much. And when you don't know me, I said, I have a boyfriend. Been dating him for years. You don't know me. I don't know you. I said, no, you don't know me at all. You know my sister. And you know that I am her sister. But do you know me? No. I said, and you super talk real slick all the time. I don't like that. I said, slick talking females get pop fucking with me. I said, and uh, I just know myself. So I try to just walk away. You know what I mean? I said, you to really watch how you talk to people because you're kind of messy. And I don't like that. I told that in front of my sister and God. She, my sister knew. My sister called it. Girl, what your song is? I'm going to play your song. I'm play my song. Don't play my song. Let that bitch hear me. Um, Baker man, I would, but he has to be respectful. And you know that's not in him. He's real comfortable with disrespecting me, Baker Man. I would talk to anybody who would talk to me respectfully. He had a came up there uh, the last time, and we could have talked for real, but he came up there with an attitude, Baker Man. He came up there with an attitude. And what I'm not going to do is keep letting him have his way and do me dirty. And think he can just get away with it. I'm tired of that. And then he lets that chat do whatever they want. You know, if I'm over there in the chat and I'm trying to chat, they tie me out for nothing, Baker Man. I know you see this. I don't be saying anything disrespectful. And let me tell you something. I rarely come at K Kwame disrespectfully. That dude. Don't call his name, bitch. You losing your damn mind? Hey, yeah, remember what you said. That dude. What you mean that's not cool for one of my status? She came over there trying to talk smart to me. And I just had to check her, you know? Sometimes you got to check people hard, even if you don't really want to. What's going on, daughter of Zion? I didn't know, I didn't, You got a new picture, daughter of Zion, so I got to get used to your new avatar. Um, I, I'm not used to it. So let, let me get used to your, um, you at new avatar so I can speak to you when I see you. What's going on, Miss Donna? Good morning to you. Hell, good morning, guys. Good morning, chat. You know what I mean? 
Oh, the ones that are just getting here. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Yeah. But I know, I know myself. That's why I just try to stay out the way of people. But Baker Man, when he comes over here, what I try to do, Baker Man, and I know that you know this, I tell people, hey, 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 let's not say that. You know, and I'll delete comments and you'll delete comments. Um, I don't let people just go in on him, though, Baker Man. It's not the same. Let me tell you something. I don't have a chat of 600, 700, 1,000 plus people sometimes going in on one fucking person like they do me, Baker Man. The minute they see my head, especially people like JJ and those moderators, they're on top of my head from the moment I get there. And you know who's the moderator over there? Damn D. You know who times me out, Baker Man? Damn D. He takes full credit and he don't care. Just like when I went to Just Saying, she's also... What's this? Okay. She also said something. And she said that she's going to time me out. She's going to uh, get me out of there every time she's over there. So then they blocked me from uh, Kev Lowe's channel. That's not their channel, Baker Man. It's like, this is not your channel. I want you to do your job, but I want you to be within reason. And Baker Man, let me tell you something. What I do, I'll read the comments that you delete or time out. I, I will read them. I don't need to piece it up with nobody, Ike. Damn, D came at me lying on me. What are you talking about? This is what I. This is what I can't fucking stand, Ike. Did you not see what the motherfucker used my mom's memorial picture any goddamn way? So you finna make me mad? Now keep fucking typing like that. I ain't gotta do a goddamn thing with Damn D. He started it with me. The fuck are you talking about? I have not made not one video putting damn D in no thumbnail, nothing. I don't pick at damn D. Damn D is a bully. And he starts shit for no fucking reason. Yeah, you made a joke about me last year. So I got to talk about it this fucking year? No, that's whack and weak. And you know it. Would you let your friend, let me tell you something. Would you let your friend use that fucking excuse? Seriously. Ike, would you let your friend tell you, yeah, uh, that's why I got, that's what I did. Yeah, I came at him a year later, nigga, because of what he said about me last year. Do you think that, do you, do you, would you really accept that? There is no y'all, though. That's where you're fucking up. There is no y'all. He needs to leave me the fuck alone. I, you don't watch my channel often, obviously, because I'm not always on him. In fact, I don't fuck with that fool either. I try not to. I only respond to what they do. You know, I didn't even know that nigga had all those videos about me. I had no idea. And when I put my real name in the search engine in YouTube, you know what the first thing that pops up? Let me tell you, Ike. The first motherfucker that pops up is damn fucking D and that picture of me in that pink shirt after I had cleaned and worked on my mom's birthday party all fucking day that picture with my mom sitting down in the chair in front of me that's the picture that pops up Ike sometimes you just gotta be fair and y'all aren't and it really is irritating damn D fucks with me and if I put my name, like I said, my real name in the search engine, the first thing that pops up is a picture of me and damn D on a live. Now, that's no fucking lie, nigga. I'm telling you what's real. Which means that they have my real name. Don't you understand about that, Ike? These people came at me, Ike. Do you understand me? They came at me with guns blazing because of another nigga. All right. I'm 
not saying he shouldn't confront what people say. It takes two to argue, but who start the argument? Ike Love. See, you're from over there, and you don't care what the truth is. And that, that irritates me, sweetie. That really does. Because I'm not fucking with these people. I don't know. I don't even know damn D's real name. I know his, I know his name starts with a D, and that's kind of why he calls himself damn D. But I don't know his first name or his last name. I've never doxed him. And on IG, his name is Damp D. You don't see his real name on IG. He goes by Damp D. But at the end of the day, I'm tired of giving these suckers shine. Fuck them. Fuck Damp D and fuck everything he's talking about. Because he's a liar and a clip artist. I don't give a fuck if you can edit your ass off. That's your business. But at the end of the day, you fuck with me and I'm not fucking with you, nigga. And that's just the truth. I am an adult. Love. I love. I'm an adult, sweetie. I am an adult. And I've tried my best to ignore these fools. But at some point, everybody has a tire switch. If you don't get tired of people fucking with you, then what's wrong with you? Do you know I faced, when I started going to those white schools, every day I had to face a bully. Every day they used to call me Bunny, fun, some fucking stupid name, Bunny Foo Foo or something like that. Aunt Bunny. They call me that all the time. Aunt Bunny, Aunt Bunny. I don't know why they got that. They got it from a, a Eddie Murphy or something. But every fucking day, every day, I get on the bus. Of course, I don't have the finest clothes because, hey, my mom don't care about name brand and she's frugal with her money. So she's not finna sit there and buy me calf Ricci jeans or LA gear and none of that. So I'm wearing regular degular shit. Alright? Every day I have to listen to people. Especially when you get to middle school and high school, you just have a switch. That you're just not gonna take it anymore. And that's the switch that I have. I am sick and tired. Every day I have to listen to that motherfuckers talk that stupid ass shit. And every day <clears throat> I had to fight. Because I'm a fighter at the end of the day and I will kick anybody's ass that I can. And if you don't kick my ass, fine. If you if I can't kick your ass, that's fine. But we will fight. We will fight till somebody gets tired. Or until the cops come. I don't give a fuck which one. I busted a boy's head through the back of a school bus. I don't give a fuck. That back window of that school bus, it got his head and it broke. I broke the glass with that motherfucker's head. That's how angry I can get. I know my power. I'm very strong. Okay? And um, I got tired of people. And when you get tired of people, you really do. No, this was when I was young. Now imagine me 12, 13 and being that strong. Um, I don't play. And that's because every day I had just lost my big mama. Um, and he was calling me a nigger. And I was like, this is the same one that's always talking to these, these motherfuckers. That's what I tell y'all. They don't care about y'all being black. You're just a nigger to them. But if you're a famous nigger, they love you. Okay. And see, that's what uh, Mr. Brown is. He's a famous nigga. They don't give a fuck uh, about you, really. They just know that you're a famous nigga that played a sport. They treat you just like that. Every day, this motherfucker's wearing Jordans and talking about Michael Jordan all day. Michael Jordan, I want to be like Jordan. Because that was a thing. I want to be like Mike. But yet, still, he's calling me a nigger. I said, I told him, I said, do you realize that Michael Jordan is black? Uh, I know Michael Jordan. I said, no, no, no. Do you know that Michael Jordan is black? So if you're calling me a nigger, isn't Michael Jordan a nigger too? 
No, that's not. Michael Jordan's not like you. Well, how not? He's black. Hell, he's blacker than me, actually. What are you talking about? Michael Jordan can't be a nigger now? Okay. I said, do you know Michael Jackson is black? Because I know you always sing in Michael Jackson, too. Do you know Michael Jackson is black? But you're not like Michael Jackson. No, 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 no. Uh, no, Michael Jackson is a nigger. Do you not know that? See, they, 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 man, these motherfuckers, they have a warped mind. Very weird, weird sense. They don't realize that um, Michael Jordan's the nigger. Uh, <laughs> Michael Jackson was the nigger. Um, Magic Johnson's a nigger. Kwame Brown's a nigger. They don't realize that. But to them, those are famous niggers. But they're still niggers at the end of the day. Right? So he's calling me a nigger every day, but wearing all these people's brands and shit. I had to beat his ass. I fucking, I fucked that Mexican up. Sure did. Threw his ass through that back window. I didn't give a fuck. I tore his ass up. And he tried to hit me in my nose, and that's what missed, that's what made me mad. I said, this motherfucker fucks up my nose, I'm going to kill his ass. He really better go. Yeah, they listen. I they think that they're above you, no matter what station they are in life. They think they're above you, and I had to let that motherfucker know. No, you're below me, cause I'm sitting on top of you, beating your motherfucking ass in the back of this bus, and they had to pull me off. Of them. It took a couple of teachers and the principal to pull me off. The male principal was the one who really got me, cause he was strong. He said, "Do you know how strong you are?" I had to really, really pull you off. Say, so, yeah, you have to pull me off this motherfucker. And of course, I got a whole week of pack for the shit. And I don't give a fuck. The bus driver, she was, oh my God. I ain't never. She pushed his head through the window. She pushed his head up. <laughs> oh my God. You don't know how angry a person really is, though. That's why you shouldn't fuck with people. And I've tried to be very kind and very uh, understanding. And uh, I'm not going to do it anymore. And rabbit, you finna be gone. You don't know my height and you don't know my weight. You're out of here. Never mind. I got you. Bye. This is, oh, Baker Man. <laughs> Baker man already had his finger on the trigger. I didn't have to really wait too long. I knew your ass was going to be the fuck up out of here. Henry, you don't know what the fuck I am. If I would, I'll tell you what's fake. What's fake is sitting your funky ass in that chat while that man's going off and not trying to tell him anything, Henry Carwell, because you want to belong that goddamn bad. You don't fucking know me, Henry. And you've been a Kwame from day one. I've been seeing your comments. Now I see you live. And whatever he tells you, you're going to do. Because you're a follower and I'm not. So get your fake, stupid ass up out of here. I don't need you over here, Henry. In fact, let me help you. Because I'm going to get you the fuck up out of my face. Yeah, I'm going to remove your comment. You ain't got to be here, baby. Take your ass on, all right? Yeah, these people want to see you and all this stuff. I don't mind showing myself. Y'all know this. I don't really don't mind, but... When I'm working and I have my other screens up, I have to be careful. I'm dealing with people and their information, and I'm not going to let people see that. 
any kind you can have a slip and, and anything else can happen. No, I'm not doing that. Uh, you never cash at me, Rochelle. I never see it. Um, I have to go back and look. It might have chimed, but if I go out of this thing, then I I have to end my life to do it. I'm on my phone, Rochelle, which is why I don't have my link in the uh, description. I have my um, uh, you know, I'm on my phone, and I don't know how to do all that adding people on my phone and shit because I usually go for, live from YouTube, not Streamyard. Well, thank you, uh, Rochelle. Thank you for the cash app. Um, whatever you give is appreciated, okay? But yeah, Kwame, you never tell the truth about me. You're constantly lying about me and making me like I'm this horrible person. But you're horrible, too. And you've been horrible to me. I don't know why you just can't admit that shit. You act like you've just been, like, I just have this one-way aggression towards you. I'm just this evil motherfucking bitch that just hates on you, hates on you. I don't. Thank you, sweetheart. Uh, like I said, Rochelle, whatever you give is welcome. Um, I really appreciate it, okay? It's kind of you. Because you don't have to give me anything, but the fact that you did is really nice, and I appreciate it. But you people have to realize these people, you know, it is what it is. I'm not seeking his friendship or anything else from him. And um, I mean that. It's one of those things that you, you know, like Teddy Pendergrass said, I think I better let it go. Hey, let it go. Looks like another love TKO technical knockout. You understand? I think I gotta let it go. Let it go. Let it go, baby. Looks like another love TKO. Hey. Uh, what you say? I love that song. My mom just love that Teddy Pentagrass. No. Yeah. Sometimes it is a TKO, you know? Uh, sometimes you can, uh, you know, what they say, hang if you can hang. If you can't hang, don't, don't hang. It's okay to say, I, you know, this is a little too much for me and I'm out, you know. It's normal shit. It's too much for me. I'm out. I can't hang with this, you know. It's life. Well, go let it go, uh, Ike Love, you know? Let it go. But yeah, Baker Man, he have to come over here and apologize to me first. We have to have a real conversation of him turning up on me constantly. Uh, like when I was upset about uh, my cousin and that goddamn Trina, he made a whole joke of it. It took me damn near five hours to get that fool to just admit or see it from my perspective. It's like he's so starching his shit that he does he does not think he's wrong ever. Not ever. No matter what he does. He wants to be right. And I can't stand that. That's a sign of being immature to me. Because everybody, that's what I told my sister. I said, you can't be right all the goddamn time. You're human. You make mistakes. Sometimes you are going to be wrong. But in her eyes, she's never wrong. I can't stand that shit. No, Heffa, you're wrong sometimes. Well, it hasn't happened to me, though. Oh, Lord. I love you, Baker Man. But on this, I think you're wrong. And um, 
I just gotta say you're wrong on that because um, I've seen him uh, apologize to people every now and again, but he's not a person that likes to apologize. He's a person that likes to be right. And I don't know why we just can't call a spade a spade. The man likes to be right most of the time and he does not see fault in the things that he does. Now, God dang. You've been watching, you've been paying attention, you know that is true. He said, okay, will you stop hollering at me? I'll apologize. If you think I, if, it's not, it's, you, when you fully apologize to somebody, there's no if, ands, or buts. It's just, I'm sorry I was wrong. But no, I apologize if you think I did something. If, if, no, there's no if. Oh, he doesn't know how to do that. He'll twist it around to where he's right and where I should have done this. And if you felt that way, you should have just dropped down and blah, blah, blah. Always uh, uh, olive or uh, uh, lavender excuse of why the fuck shit goes on. No, you're just a fuck nigga and you don't want to admit it. You try to present yourself as you this nice ass person when you're really just an asshole. And I see you. And I've been seeing you. That's the problem that you do have with me. You don't have to fight that my eyes are wide the fuck open. And I've been seeing you. Yeah. Oh, man. I just had to let it go, like I said. I had, uh, I'm not going to sit there and tell just saying. And then fucking don't even follow my own advice. No, no, no. But follow my own advice. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to follow my own advice on this one. On this situation, I got to follow my own advice. On this situation, I really got to think. Because a part of me is just really fucking sick and tired. I'm sorry. It is just what it is. It is what it is. And it ain't what it ain't. And that's... Mm -hmm. You get away from me. And then he's still trying to blame me. Telling me what kind of woman I am all the time. No, you don't even know me, man. Yeah, he wants to take one instance and, and, and paint that as that's how you are all the time. But he knows that's a goddamn lie. I don't know why this chat's not moving. I guess not. How long have I been on? An hour and seven. I got like 10 more minutes. Maybe 20. You didn't want to deserve better. I don't know, honey. I just like, you know, sometimes this chat just, just stops and I'm like, what the hell? But I know people be, people, this morning, people are busy, you know? Frog. Meister, you're right. I got to do what's right for me, and I gotta, I gotta stop this shit. When something is bringing you unnecessary uh, pain and misery, you need to let it go. If you feel fucked up after dealing with somebody, whether it's online or in person, you gotta leave them alone. How many times have I felt fucked up? You have no idea. You don't know me. You don't know that I'm a sensitive person, really, and I and stuff does get under my skin after a while. You don't know me. But because I'm so strong and try to remain so, uh, people think, oh, well, it doesn't bother her. You know, we could say all these fat things to her, but she's all right with it. You have no idea how I really feel. I find it funny that people are not human on here. They feel like they can just say and do whatever they want. They wouldn't do none of this to your face, though. Let's just be honest. They wouldn't say shit to your face at all. They would just, you know, go into the shadows and talk that shit. But in your, but on here, <clears throat> they're really badass. 
On here, they're tough as tough, you know? But yeah, I'm, a, I'm over this shit. I'm tired, y'all. And he's never going to give me a real apology. That's why I don't really fool with him either. He never really apologizes for things that he does. He likes being ugly to me. That's why all that. Come on back over here. So, Fla, we just be roasting. It's just jokes. I knew it was more than that. The minute I came over, he got all mad in his feelings and blocked me. I said, I don't want her over here because they wanted me to say sorry, and I wasn't going to say sorry. And I said, I got to pray on it. He got mad about that. Mm -hmm. He got mad about that because I say I have to pray on something. I pray about everything. <clears throat> That's the way I was raised. I was raised to pray and think. Is it really on your heart? Think about it. I always say think. Think it over now. <clears throat> then I come back to her. Have you thought about it, honey? Did you pray it? Did you pray about it? You ask God about it? I tell her, well, Mom, God didn't give me an answer. He said, oh, he gave you an answer. You just don't see it yet. But he gave you an answer. And sure enough, she'd be right about that. And if you really care about something, like I do, you should care. You should, you should pray. There's nothing wrong with that. No, daughter Zion, they don't get to me. I'm just explaining my situation, daughter Zion. I'm just explaining to people that want us to kind of bury the hatchet. Why I can't seem to do that anymore because I've just had enough of the garbage. Mr. Brown, take care of your ass on because you're the same one that came over here telling me I was in love with them. Which I'm not. And I'm not obsessed about a goddamn thing. My chat brought him up, not me. So stop. And I came here to re to respond or uh, about what Stufu did. So shut your fucking mouth, Mr. Brown. You don't fucking know me. And just for that, I'm getting you gone. Bye. So that's out of my face, Mr. Brown. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You have no idea who I am. You don't know my life. You the same motherfucker that comes in here. Um, uh, you're in love with him. You the same, <clears throat> same motherfucker that comes in here doing that dumb ass shit. So don't fucking talk to me, stupid boy. Show your ass on. And no, you cannot type in here. <clears throat> I've got you gone for at least 30 minutes. <clears throat> no, Bubba. No, 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 no. Are you going to go to the window? Okay. <clears throat> My guard dog. <laughs> A lot of people are weird about you. You know, they're weird about me, and it's weird to me. <clears throat> but I told you a long time ago that I always attract weird folks and crazy folks. I don't know why. <clears throat> I guess there's something about me that's more welcoming and, you know, that allows people to be a little more kooky around me. I don't know, but I always, I seem to always attract the kook, the kookies. I always seem to. Uh, okay, sweetie, I'm gonna learn how to pin the link. I'm gonna. Uh, I guess I do it on Streamyard tonight. I'm gonna practice a little bit and see if I can't get it down. Okay, because I, I know because I'm always uh, putting that link in the description. Or in the chat. I get to run in my mouth, uh, uh, you know, and that's what I like to do the most. So, But I, I got to get sharp, right? And I really got to give me a, a good overlay. I need to do that. So that when I'm getting ready to let people up or whatever, I can kind of see what's going on.
Yeah, I saw you, Stufu, and you did what you said you would get you did. You actually went up there, you talked to him. Of course, you tried to turn you around and pull it off on me, but I'm glad that you at least tried. Stufu, do you hear me? I'm glad that you at least tried. You actually went up there, you hit the link, you said what you said, and I appreciate it. And even though he turned you around or tried to turn you around, you stayed on your square, and I appreciate that. Most people on here do not do that, Stufu. They just don't have the heart to do it. Um, and you showed that you have the heart to do it. So I appreciate it. I wish other people would stick up, you know, and say something. But a lot of times being in the group is more enticing, you know. Uh, being on the winning team is more enticing. I'm a loser team. I don't have a really big planet. <clears throat> uh, a big. I'm not saying I'm a loser. That's not it. But I'm just saying I don't have the panel. I don't have the huge numbers that he gets every day. He gets at least six thousand, five thousand on videos. You know what I mean? And that's consistent. It's not like every now and again. That man's gonna get it. It depends on how long he's on. He's gonna get about eight, nine, uh, five, six, seven thousand views. And um, he's a bigger panel. He's a bigger channel. Um, uh, even his smaller channels are bigger. You know what I mean? So um, I get it. You know, you want to be on the winning team. And he never has less than three, 400 in his chat. Um, his chat usually is always popping. So especially on Saturday, he's in a one of those moves to really roast. Oh, my goodness. He'll get six, seven hundred, eight hundred people. When he was going back at years, he had almost 700 people. So, uh, they're there for the bullshit. That's for damn sure. So, um, he gets those folks. So, the fact that you spoke up for this small channel and tried to stick up for me is greatly appreciated. But, yeah. I mean, even when you... When I was on Kevlo, I got texts for trying to talk to him. I tried to talk to him. But I know that she didn't reply to my conversation. I find that odd. I can't keep playing peacemaker between these fools in Brunswick, but at the end of the day, why didn't you reply back to my conversation? I asked you a specific question, and you never said nothing. I do find that odd. And I'm tired. That's what I'm saying. I'm tired of people who are always one way. They're their way, and that's it. And as long as you can do something for them, they're good. Help their situation. Don't worry about what you asked them or how you came at him. No, no, no. It's what it's it's about you, know, you helping him help them. No. I asked you a specific question. You straight up ignored me. If you think I'm not pissed off about that, you're out of your fucking mind. I don't like being left hanging. Brunswick is a weird place. I feel a lot of people down there are rude. There's something about you men down there that's just something else. I don't know what it is. Y'all are, I don't know, something else. But it's weird to me. I'll give you that much. It's, it's strange. I'm not, now see how fast you replied there? I did that for a reason, uh, Baker Man. I want to see, you know, because it, I feel like y'all are real quick to, you know, uh, you know, defend Brunswick. I'm not really dissing Brunswick. I'm just saying that a lot of y'all, it seemed like y'all, listen to me, are a rude group of people. I'm not trying to be funny, Bruns, uh, Baker Man, but I noticed that a lot of this shit with them is one sided. And I can't, I, I can't say what I see. Come on now, don't be fair. Yikes, nigga, you gotta go. Don't come here asking me nothing stupid. It's your asshole. You need to ask me what I'm talking about. Don't ask me. I'm not dissing all of Brunswick, okay? Brunswick sounds like a nice place. But you have a poor representation of Brunswick on here. You know it, and I know it. The way these people carry on... You would think they love they steady or the or they town, not the way they act.
It is what it is, though. Becker Man Jr., you are from Brunswick. That's your hometown. I don't want to diss it. Because I would hate for people to diss East Austin. I love East Austin. Um, from the bottom of my heart, love my love my city. I love my, you know, folks from where I'm from. I do. But at the end of the day, um, if people are fucking up and you know, uh, showing a bad side of it, I, I got to say it. You know, I gotta speak on that. It's a bad representation of where you from to have these niggas up here, um, talking like they do. It really is. Ask yourself this, Baker Man Jr. Would you want to go to Brunswick after hearing what you heard? Out these folks' mouth? Just asking. Being honest with you. Would you want to go to Brunswick after hearing all that you've heard over and over again from these people? We're not advertising over here, baby. Gotta go, gotta go. I let people rock out for the most part, but a lot of y'all come over here with other agendas, and I'm not letting you do it. You come over here trying to advertise and all this and that. No, 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 no. You're not doing it on my watch. Not on my shit, you're not. And you don't even ask. You just come and do it. What the fuck? No. No, my voice is horrible this morning. My allergies are acting up real bad today. Oh my goodness! Sweetheart, this is this is Baker man. If I'm going off of the representation of the people that are popular on this app that are from that place, I would think Brunswick is a weird place. Listen to ears. These people are pulling up on folks. They're doing all type of wild shit, Baker, man. Damn. It's not, I'm not trying to get personal to you personally. But I'm just saying, overall picture, would you think it's a nice place the way these people talk? Listening to Kev Lowe talk about his goons and shit, do you think it's a nice place? When you hear uh, Mr. Brown talk about all that shit and, man, you better watch your mouth, pussy-ass nigga, this and that. After all the bitch-ass niggas and all the pussy-ass niggas and weak-ass niggas and this and that that you have heard, would you think it's a nice place? Seriously, sir. I'm not, you're not, you're not the only person on here from there. Okay. You're one part. But do you see the bigger picture? People with bigger platforms and you hear how they talk? Come on. I was in the chat that day. 600 plus people heard that man going off. Well, then he is a poor representation of Jamaica and he cannot and what I don't like about Bolo Let me tell you what I don't like about Bolo Bolo puts his tongue on people from America and speaks real trash on us So hell no, I'm not letting Bolo get away with a goddamn thing nigga. This ain't your country Then we aren't your people stop speaking on us Stop telling us what women are supposed to be like and this and that when you don't even have that in your own fucking backyard. No, focus on your backyard, mister. You goddamn right I said that about Bolo. And I meant what I said. I don't give a shit. And um, we see people on here that are from there. And how do they act? Hmm? Okay. I, I rest my case. I ain't got to prove it. I just say what I said. But Bolo talks a hell of shit on black people in America. And he don't have no right to say nothing about us. I'm tired. Let me tell you something what I'm tired of. And I'm just going to be blank, point blank, period. I'm tired of other people from the diaspora shitting on black Americans. I'm tired of them trying to take credit for things that we do. I'm fucking sick of that.
So if you're a tether or you are coon from somewhere else, don't speak on me. That's why I don't like uh, Fresh and Fit. They're not FBA American men, but they got so much to say about American culture and American black people. No, shut your fucking mouth. You left your country. Remember that. If your country was so great, you'd still be there. So don't come here because our movement got you here. I'm fucking sick of that, Baker, man. And I mean that. And that goes for anybody. I work with Nigerians, okay? I work with quite a few of them. And they're talking that bullshit about black Americans. And I put their ass in their place. Okay, if Nigeria is so great, why aren't you there? Fuck it. Listen, I'm not trying to diss the town or country they from, but when you come dissing me and dissing foundational black Americans, you goddamn right I'm going to tell you about yourself and where you're from. I don't have a problem doing that, Baker Man Jr. No, I do not. Because first of all, Bolo has too much to say about black people over here when he's not from here. He don't live here. You know what a lot of those Nigerians that I've met say? Black people are so lazy. They're lazy. How do you build a whole fucking country and engine and be uh, and do so much innovative shit and be lazy? How is that possible? How can you how can you create all these genres of music, do all this shit for American culture and be lazy? How can you come from the worst ghettos and make it to the fucking NBA top players in the world? How can you do that and be lazy? These people constantly shit on us. I'm tired of that shit. No, fuck them. And I mean it. You keep your tongue off of black Americans. Then when you tell them, well, we fought and raw and, and, and marched and shit uh, for your rights to be here. You know that, right? Oh, I know that. I, I did. Then they don't know anything about uh, American history or slavery. They don't know nothing. I want to tell you something. No, shut your fucking mouth and go read a book. Go learn something before you come running your mouth to me. I mean that. I'm not trying to diss all of Brunswick, but I'm just saying the representation that y'all have had for the last few days has been horrible, sir. No, I don't go around this in Nigeria. I've never been there. I don't diss Nigerian people. I don't I don't diss them. I don't know them. I, I, listen, if you respect me, I respect you, but you're not gonna shit on all Americans when I know what we do. I'm not gonna let you do it. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're Chinese. I've met plenty of Asians that got like to say, and I say, okay, well, why don't you go and work in, um, in Asia? Why don't you, uh, why are you in our neighborhood? What? I said, yeah, this is the black neighborhood. Why are you here? I have my own business. I have, I, uh, yeah, I hear you. But why did you put it here, though? You could have put it anywhere. Why'd you put it here? You put it here because you don't really have a choice. You know you're not going to go to them white people and make that money. So just shut the fuck up and stop. You make your money because of black people. Okay? Because black women come in here, buy the dozens every day, and buy your shit. Right, lady? So while you're dissing people, you need to be respecting people. Because we're the ones that make you money. Why are you shitting on your money? That's dumb. But they get to a certain status and they think that they're better than you. I'm tired of that shit. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm tired of people thinking that they're better than us. No.
Yeah, I know. Listen, I work with a Nigerian. Let me tell you something. His sister married an American black man. He complained about it. Why did she marry him? She's not supposed to do that. Why did she marry that nasty American nigga? That, and then they, they call you a kata. They have a, they have a nasty nickname for black Americans. Now, mind you, now let me give you a little history lesson. Y'all remember apartheid back in the 90s? Huh? Y'all remember South Africa? Do you know who kind of ended that? Black Americans. And I'm going to tell you how. Because they boycotted pep, they boycotted all kind of products that were helping apartheid. They, the main one they boycotted was Coke. They boycotted all kind of shoe companies, everything. They just stopped spending their money with them because they didn't agree with apartheid and they wanted to make their voices known. These are black HB, HBUs, HBCUs did that every day. And they were like, fight the power, free our people. They did that. Black Americans cared about South Africa. All right? And these same people get over here and call you a kata, which is just another word for nigger. Those same people that you helped and fought for, and did y'all not, a lot of y'all don't remember this because we were young, we weren't in school at the time, but a lot of my uh, family were college, especially my older cousins, they uh, they had all kinds of teachers, so I was talking about free South Africa, this and that. They were really off in it. We did that. We helped in that, okay? We did, with our voices. Why do you think they always want to know what we think about something? Because we actually can move the needle. We actually care about something. And we can move a needle. But that's a little history lesson for you. Apartheid, South Africa, was aided by black Americans, especially young black American students on college campuses were fighting apartheid right here in America with their dollars by not spending their money on those products. And that's a fact. You can look it up. I ain't got a lot to you. That's one thing I ain't got to do, baby. I ain't got a lot. And then it's like, okay, we just supposed to pretend like we just, we just this worst people on the planet when we have, when our struggle has freed a lot of people. Hell, the LGBT followed the uh, civil rights uh, uh, blueprint. Do y'all not know that? Do y'all not know that? That's how they got their rights? I'm talking to you now. I'm telling you something for real, Jack. I'm not telling you no hocus pocus, no boo boo. I'm telling you the truth. Mm hmm. But black Americans constantly put their necks out for other countries, constantly care about other countries. That's what we do. We're the bleeding hearts. We are always marching for something or somebody or somebody's plight. Even stuff that's not our own. And then you would think, okay, well, we, you know, do they even mention it? No, they don't even say nothing about it. But the ones that were around at that time, and remember, they know. They know exactly what happened. Well, that's a, that, that's a shame, Vince, but I mean, you know, once you marry somebody, you in it, you know? I've had family turn on me because of uh, their, their uh, significant other. That's not, no, that's not unusual. Um, you know, it, it's what she says. I don't like Vince. He's a troublemaker. And then you're a troublemaker. 
And he wants peace in his home, so he's going to leave Vince alone. Trust me. I know you heard about that, Vince, because that was your homeboy. That was your friend. Third grade, that's a long time to know somebody. Um, I've had friends since I was four years old. That means I've known that person all my life. Think about that. I know her and my mom were friends. I've known her, I've known her my whole life, right? If she would have turned on me like that, that would hurt my heart. Good morning, Angie. But no, Bolo, he needs to mind his business. And uh, I stand firm on that. I don't care. You need to mind your business, Bolo. Stop speaking on black Americans. You're not a part of black culture. You're not FBA and mind your business. I tell that to people who are white who don't know what they're talking about. You don't know anything about black culture. You don't know about family reunions. You don't know about Big Mama. You don't you, you you don't care about your people the way we care about our people. So mind your business. I went through that through uh, C nineteen when my mom was at the at that facility and I couldn't come in, and she was like, "You come almost every day. I gotta open this window every day." I said, "You open it every other day. Every day I come here, you go open this window. You're gonna let me see my mom. What's wrong with you?" Oh, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Yes, you are. You're saying plenty. What I'm bugging you, and that's your job. Hell, I had to complain about. It. I said, "Hell, you make me wonder. Is my mom getting the right kind of care? Because it's like you have a problem opening this goddamn window, and you shouldn't. And you shouldn't have spoke on. But and y'all, that's a lot of y'all that come up here. What you mean, black people? Well, because we just don't throw our people away. We love our people." To the bitter end. So what you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about, lady. You're not of my culture. You don't understand what I'm talking about. And um, you really don't care about your people like that. So stay in your fucking lane and mind your business. Shit. And open this goddamn window when I tell you to, bitch. So that's what you do before you make skissy tea come out of here. Better go on. Um, of course he got her citizenship. That's what she wanted. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Vince, but that's what they do. He chose her. I mean, sorry. They're going to choose that significant other, baby. You know, you, you know you're going to lose. Um, you ain't got a chance. You ain't got a snowball's chance in hell when it comes to that woman. And uh, you lost. And I hate that for you because I've had, I've had females that I tried to tell, you know, he ain't no good for you, blah, 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 blah. Girl, why you, get, why you keep letting that nigga do you like this, this and that? And um, he said I was a problem and I was getting in her head and all I want to do is be in her shoes and all that old pimp shit. And she fell for it and threw me to the side. I know just how that feels. We were friends for years. I was like, wow. Couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't believe her. I said, I said, this man might be temporary. Our friendship is longer than this. You gonna throw me out because of it? He said, she said, you just wanna be in my she started talking like the nigga and everything. I was like, oh well. So far, you don't have a snowball's chance. You might as well go on. And when they broke up, she was looking for me, but by that time the damage was done. I didn't want to talk to her no more. I said, no, nah, baby, because any man could come between you and I, and that's not good. I told my sister the same thing. Um, we are family at the end of the day. Um, this man, you know, you're married to him, but that don't, that don't mean it's for life. At any moment, you could leave that nigga. At any moment, he could leave you. You know what I mean? It seemed like you want to stick with your kinfolk, but you can't tell people, you know? People going to make their own choices. And you got to accept it sometimes. But Baker Man, uh, you too smart. Um, Johnny Lee, y'all are great representations of y'all's hometown. Uh, to be quite honest with you, too smart is a great representation. He's intelligent. Um, he's almost done with school. You're a sweet person. You have your own career. Um, Johnny Lee, he's doing great. Uh, y'all are great representations of y'all's uh, city, of y'all town, to be quite honest with you. 
Uh, so there is a flip side, but y'all are just not the loud ones on the mic. That's the thing. You're, you don't have a mic in your hand. So people don't really hear you, Baker Man, but they can see your character and they see how well you are and how, the good things that you do. So um, I don't want to just shit on Brunswick. That's not my intention. I don't know anybody from there except for y'all, okay? But at the end of the day, I mean, I got to call, I got to say what I see. And when I see a bunch of crazy people on here that are talking reckless as hell all the time. But yeah, um, no. Please stop speaking on black Americans all the time. That's what I, and I mean that. I, I mean, because I, I've encountered this over and over again from all kind of people. Um, uh, Indian people, they think they, I work with a lot of Indian people too. That sometimes they want to speak to you and then the other days they act like they don't know you. It's like, what? Okay. And it's like, okay, I'm not trying to be super friendly. I tried to be one of the people that was always in other people's culture. And what's this? And, oh, I love this. But then I realized they really don't want you in their culture. They they kind of um, uh, protect their uh, culture and their shit way better than we do. We need to start getting like that on code and protecting our own. Because we don't do that. We're too welcoming. And that's I think that's why another reason why we get shit on so much too welcoming, trying to be nice to everybody, and we shouldn't be. We should um, hoard our culture and uh, our shit as well and stop letting people come in and think they can run in. And even that dude from, um, what's his name? Where is he from? Oh, um, oh God, what's the name of that dude? I can't think of his name, but he's from um, Black Lives Matter. Clearly a white boy claiming that he's black, knowing that he's lying. It's already been proven that he's lying. He's still up there trying to be in black folks' business. It's like, no, man. You're not of us. And yet, still, you tried to lie and say you were. And now, it's been found that you're not. And you're still trying to keep this shit up? No, man. Go sit your ass down, man. Stop putting people in your culture and try to represent you when they don't. And to be quite honest, a lot of these uh, people that come over here for a better life, um, they need to respect the people that helped them get here. And they're told, let me tell you something, they are told from the gate, from the get-go, not to associate with us. Y'all know that? They're told that from the gate. They're told not to associate with black Americans. Can y'all believe that? Yeah, um, I, I'm FBA, you know, Foundational Black American. I believe in it. I'm with it, and uh, I claim it. I have my flag to prove it. Um, all my papers from my grandpas and them and from the census, I, I'm FBA. And I dare anybody to come up here and try to tell me about my people. You're not going to do it. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't care what side of the fence you sit on. You're not going to, and that's exactly why I got that motherfucking bolo, and I don't give a fuck. I'll tell them again, mind your business. Worry about your culture. Don't worry about ours, okay? And that's just facts. Worry about you. I'll tell it to anybody with my full chest. Do a fuck. I love my people, and I know that my grandma and my grandpa worked hard to have what they had in the time that they did. Um, they weren't making no 20000 50000 a year. They were making pennies on a dollar. They were making quarters and dimes. And they made it do what it do. Fuck out of here. If you think you're finna sit there and disrespect mine, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind, baby. I ain't gonna let it happen. Sorry. Mm -mm. Never, ever, ever, ever am I gonna do that. No. And I know people get offended by what the things I say, and I'm sorry. Um, well, I'm really not. Why should I be? Because they're not. They're not. They're not sorry when they offend me. When they offend us, they say it with a full chest. They offend the fuck out of us. Call us lazy. This, that, the other. Akatas. Uh, blah 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 blah. And they're not sorry. Why should we be sorry for how we treat them? No, that's our problem now. We're too fucking apologetic, and we're too welcoming, and we're too goddamn nice. 
And that's because we've been through a hard struggle, y'all. We have a big heart because we've been through a hard struggle. Yeah, the truth hurts on both sides. It hurt me when I when I tried to be friends with that uh dude from uh Kenya and he told me no because I was black American and he didn't want to be friends with me. I was like, why? He was like, I don't be friends with you, with your kind. You're kind, I'm black. You're black. And believe it or not, a lot of them Dominicans and shit, they don't believe they black. So I say fuck them fools too. Hell no. You don't even want to claim being black. Hair nappier than mine, darker than me, but don't want to be black. Well, what the fuck are you then? Oh, let me get skilled. No, no, you're Dominican. Okay, you're Dominican, but what else? The fuck? And you're kissing people's ass. You're a, let me tell you something. You were dropped off first, Dominican. It don't mean anything. You're a conquer people like the rest of us. You were dropped off first to do sugar, okay? You Puerto Ricans, they don't want to. I'm not black. I'm not black. I'm Puerto Rican. Okay, okay. Woo, child, please. I ain't got time to deal with y'all's uh, identity crisis. But when you talk to them people in Spain, they call you bastards. I know what I'm talking about. It's like, uh, he's Mexican. I was like, yeah. And you're Spanish. And they'll, they'll talk me speak the, lang the same language. He said he speaks a broken Spanish. He don't speak Span Spanish for real. He speaks broken Spanish. They don't even like them. What the fuck are we talking about? But they kiss their ass. If y'all if y'all watch Telemundo, I have a um, lady that lives in my apartment complex. She's a uh, an anchor, a news reporter, and she does uh, she does a, she does CBS Austin for Telemundo. It's okay. Um, do you realize that they never put anybody dark on Telemundo? As many dark Mexicans as there are, you never see dark people. There's so many black Dominicans and shit, but if you watch their news, you would never see them because they don't put them on fucking TV. I'm telling y'all the truth. And how they try to wash away the nigga. They had a big thing in those countries back in, I said, the 1800s, early 1900s, where they made it with black people to get rid of the black part. And it almost was, but there's just, you know, that nigga gene is just a little too strong. And uh, it's hanging on. But there are a lot of them that do not, like Sierra Cruz, she has a song called Azuka Negra. It means sugar, black, black sugar. Asuka is sugar, nigga, black, black sugar. Okay. Um, they did not like her. Okay, I'll reply to you when I get off live. Be careful in other countries, sweetie. They even had um, a girl trip that they went that was on that went viral. They said, "Do not come to the Dominican Republic if you are black, because they have a real problem with dark black women, dark black people. These people are crazy. They're so brainwashed that it's gonna take a long time to get that brainwash off of them. As this has already been hundreds of years, they're really brainwashed. Uh, they're sick minded." That whole colorism shit has taken over the whole world, and it's a sick mindset. Indian people have it. They have a certain word for it, but I can't, I can't think of the name exactly what they call dark Indians. She said that she had a baby, and her mom, the first thing her mom wanted to know was, was the baby dark? We're talking about 2023 now, people. Is the baby dark or light? As if that matters. She used to be saying... Is the baby healthy? Is the baby okay? Does he have all 10 toes, all 10 fingers and shit? 
does he look like? Who does he look like? You know, does it look like you or that or no, no. Is he dark? Is the baby dark? You know, that's a silly ass question to ask. When I first saw my nephew's baby, I didn't say, oh, I wonder, is he dark? No, I want to know, does he look like my nephew? And the fact that he looks like my nephew, because my nephew's not dark. Um, but e even if he was, I just care, who does he look like? Does he favor our family more or hers? And the fact that he favors me and my family more makes me happy. Those are the things that you really should be asking. But not, is the baby dark? That's a silly ass question. And it's stupid, especially in 2023. I love Celia Cruz. I told you I did it out my race. I know. Yeah. You don't realize what you get. Um from your side of the family that you have no idea who these people are or what they're about, but you have so much of their shit. It's weird, but it's called DNA for a reason. You're already coded, baby. You're coded to like certain things. That's why people who have drug addict parents should never do drugs because you're already coded to like that shit. It's in your DNA. And if you start doing it, it's going to be even harder for you to kick the habit. But yeah, uh, that's just real. And they sit up on their ass. Is the baby dark or is it light? Like that's really a a, a a concern. Like God dang man, as many dark Indians as you see, you shouldn't be worried about that. That's what they worry about it. Good morning, bald head Wayne. How are ya? Let's see. Oh, it's almost two hours. Yeah, I gotta get out of here, guys. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, uh the colorism and uh I hate to say racism that we receive from other people uh is really sad. But that's why in my life they're not gonna talk bad on me and mine. Um I and then I I told that one dude who called my he called my called my people lazy, called us lazy. I said, look at look at where you work. Ninety percent of this area is black people. In the hardest part of the building. Now, is that an accident or is that by design? I don't understand what you mean. You don't I said, look around, silly ass fool. We're in the hardest part of the building and we're working the hardest. And we're making numbers. Now, why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Because we're hard workers. If we weren't, if we weren't working hard and we weren't hard workers, why would they put our people back here? Some people just got, then he looked around. I said, no, just close your mouth and really open your eyes and see who is working? Who's doing the bulk of the hard work is what I'm asking you. Oh, I, I, I didn't realize. I said, no, you don't realize anything. I said, it's easy to walk around that pompous, stuck-up attitude, but it's hard to really look at the big picture. I said, and who is mostly in management? So I didn't have a, a black manager, so I had been there at least five years. I didn't have a black manager. And you didn't see them. I said, so black people aren't graduating at an alarm rate. There's all kind of black black males and stuff that are graduating in college. Where are they? Why aren't they in here? And then it got so bad to when we had one of our startup meetings, one of our huge meetings with the whole area, we brought it up like, why? Are, when are we going to start seeing minorities in management? Because they don't want you there. They want management to be completely white. I don't care where you work. My sister worked at, uh, I'm not going to say the bank, at a major bank. The whole floor is nothing but black people. But in management, you didn't see not one black person. Do you know how many people on that floor that were black that had degrees? 
Lots of them, including herself. She had a degree, but no black people could be in management. It was all white. We have to call this stuff out. I don't care. You can go to a McDonald's and everybody in there is Mexican. And that one white person is that that's in there is a manager. And I've seen it too many times. I know you have too. These ain't lies. These, this is just observation of life. I call it spade a spade. I don't care where you work. In corporate America, you could work with a whole bunch of black people. Y'all could be the main people on the floor, making calls, taking calls, all that. And your manager will always be what? White. Now, I ask you, I've job after job, job, I don't care what job it is. Job after job, that's the scene. Why do you think that is? Everybody was working from home back in 2020, right? So there was no white overseer, no white boss. White people were losing their minds back in 2020. You know why? Because they're used to being in control. They're used to being the boss. They don't have no one to boss. Everybody is working from home, still getting the job done, still doing great. That's why you have so many remote jobs now. Because people realize, I can do this job from home. Why am I stressed out on this floor in this horrible chair when I can sit in something comfortable and do my job. How many people did the news where they had on a jacket, a tie, and a shirt, but at the bottom they, they had they had on their boxers, chilling. Okay, from up from the uh, waist up, I'm professional, but from the waist down, I'm chilling like a villain. We saw so many camera slips and, and underwear slips, it was ridiculous back in 2020. Didn't we not? People doing the news, doing everything from where home. Because we had to. And the stress <clears throat> that uh, my sister said that she feels, she said she can wear her hair how she wants because she works from home too. She wears her hair. She said every time she tried to wear her hair and her ethnic styles, ethnic now, that's cold for braids and stuff, um, she would get asked, why you're wearing your hair like that? Now she wears her hair how she wants to. No one asks her nothing. And you think that she's not loving it? Yes, she loves it. She don't want to go back to a building nowhere. She said, I love working from home. She loves it. So do I. Less pressure, less drama. I go in for meetings and shit. Like if I was in the meeting or in the building, that's how I got sick. The minute I went back to work, <clears throat> brass over there coughing and hawking, that's how I got COVID, y'all. Going to a meeting at the job. They had me in the hospital for weeks and everything else. No, they can keep that bio plague over there. I'm good. But y'all, let's see. It's been almost two hours. I appreciate y'all for coming in here this morning. Baker, man, please don't take what I said uh, offensive. I still love you. Uh, you are a great representation of Brunswick. You Johnny Lee, too smart. Y'all are a great representation of your town. But y'all are not on the mic, like I said. And uh, that's just the truth. Y'all are not on the mic, okay? But y'all still matter. Y'all mean a lot, you know? Yeah, but Crystal, there's always um, colorism in families. Especially uh, old school families, they really have that. Black women, dark black women had to take back their power and say, we are beautiful. We are, our hair is beautiful. We're, we have to come with our own self-esteem and love ourselves because uh, the majority of people just kept on with the light skin, this and that. We just had to say enough of that. We love ourselves, enough of that. You don't like us, you don't like these full lips and hips, okay, cool. But we love ourselves and we love our hair. <clears throat> That's why so many black women are natural now. Natural hair down to their ass, to their waist. Showing people, yeah, you can grow your real hair. You don't have to keep wearing that creamy crack that breaks off your hair and damages your scalp. Uh, you can be yourself. Trust me, when I first cut my hair off, it was hard for me to look at myself and uh, just really see uh, me without all that flat iron and shit because i used to flat iron every morning religiously 
get a perm every six weeks. You know the creamy crack is coming because, hell, your roots are getting thicker. You go to the shop, girl, it's almost time for a perm. Girl, you need that relaxer. Come on now. It's almost time, so fly, yeah. Mika, freaky Mika, it's time for your perm. Okay, I'll be in here uh, in two weeks, and I'll get my relaxer, and then, of course, my hairstyle. Okay, so I've stressed out my hair. Uh, my hair is all straight and stringy again. Thank you very much. You cut my ends. My hair never seems to go past my shoulders like this because my hair just loves to break off because guess what? It's relaxed. <clears throat> it's already dead, man. It's already dead. It's just, it died during the relaxing process. And then you say, oh, girl, I'm starting to burn. You know how y'all do? I'm starting to burn. You got to get under that wash, get that shit rinsed out, and get back on the wear. That motherfucking dryer, okay? That dry. You might be under that dryer for about an hour. You never know. People fall. Every time you go to the shop, you see people falling the fuck asleep under them goddamn dryers. I don't care what kind of hairstyle they got. They are knocked out because of that damn dryer. <laughs> yeah. And then you every morning I sit there with that flat iron. I turn that motherfucker on first thing in the morning, y'all. Y'all know you gotta let that motherfucker heat up, so you turn it up to the notch, huh? What was it on? 200, 300, whatever. How how flat do I want it? What hairstyle am I going for? I used to wear that flip style like Mary J. Back in the day, I used to love flipping my hair up. And honey. Uh and then of course you gotta put your what you call pump it up. You gotta put that damn uh, stiff ass pump it up on your hair because you do not want to lose your hairstyle for the day. Okay, so spray it first, pump it up next, and then goddamn it, it's on. And then once you kill it again, uh, spray all that pump it up on it so it stays, right? If you really want to get real, you better use that jam for them edges. I get that black ass hair gel. <laughs> oh, I said, damn, I don't know how I had any hair on my head back in the day. The way I treated my hair, shit, no wonder my hair was always uh, breaking off and shit. Oh. Crystal, usually colorism goes the other way. Uh, most of the time, like my grandma, she covered light. Um, she liked my light skin sister. My sister is a red bone. Mother sister's a high yellow. She loved that. And um, my sister had hair like my grandma. Oh, she's got my hair. I didn't have her hair. <laughs> my hair was 4C, baby. My grandma didn't like my hair. And she damn sure um, would give, she moved me aside and give my sister a hug first. My sister, who wasn't even happy to see her, who didn't even want to give her a hug, to be honest with you. I'm the motherfucker that was excited to see Granny. Hey, Granny, I'd run up to my grandma. My grandma look at me, mm -mm, you black girl, you move. I used to give these this yellows and these reds hugs first. Because my cousins, uh, my one of my cousins was, was high yellow. <clears throat> Light green, brown eyes with um, blonde hair. And she loved that. So she giving her a hug. Uh, my cousin who's uh, a red bone with real pretty hair, wavy hair, she get a hug. Uh, my sister who's a red bone with a wavy shit, she gets a hug. And here I'm over here at the last of the line. And I might get a hug. And if I do, I get a side hug at that. And so you look nice. I like what you got on. But she didn't like my hair. Mm -mm. No. So I know. I know what I'm talking about. Colorist to the to the core. But what gets you about these colorist red women, why do they be marrying the blackest niggas they can find? My uh my grandpa was black as hell. Like, um, uh, uh, I'll be so confused. Like, why? Okay, Grandpa is black as hell. Grandpa, My grandpa is dark like Kwame. I'm telling you, my grandpa was dark, super dark. I mean, you might think he that nigga was TJ. He's so black. I'm telling you. He used to call him Smoke and all kind of little, you know, black names. Here comes Smoke. Here comes Smoke. He's so black. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, you married him, but you don't like black, you don't like dark. I don't get you. 
But now my first grandpa, my actual grandpa, he was uh, red, like my grandma. They were both red. So they got, you know. And then my grandpa, uh, you know, his, 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 um, let's see. Uh, his great, yeah, was Irish. So he was part white anyway. So that, you know, I guess she felt she hit the lotto. Sweetie, I'm telling you what, the, you know, what it is. Sure. She loved the dark skinned boys. And that was so strange to me. Her sons, well, my my dad and my uncle Freddie, uh, they were both light. She had two light skinned sons. My grandma had ten kids, so but the other six, they were all black. Cause she had four girls and six boys. Uh and then so she had two sons that were light, but the other four were really dark like my grandpa. And then um, she had two daughters that were dark. And she had two that were light. So, yeah, it was because her first husband, those were all the light-skinned kids. Her second husband, they were all dark. But like I said, my grandpa was black as black. He was beautiful black. I mean, cold black. That motherfucker, if you, if you didn't see his eyes, goddammit, it, you don't know. Them eyes and them teeth, because he, he had a big old white smile. With a gold tooth on it. <laughs> you can always see that smile, baby. But yeah, uh, my grandma was very colorist. She didn't want my mom because my mom was uh, dark. My mom was kind of dark brown. She wasn't quite chocolatey, but she was dark. Like I said, I guess a step above chocolate, maybe. Well, she was dark, and my dad was red. My grandma did not like that. Wow, wow, oh my God. And then when she saw my sis, because my sister was born with blue eyes, she was super happy. And she, even when we were little kids, she said, that one over there was born with blue eyes. Show sure what? It took her a long time for her eyes to get dark. She would just dote on them light-skinned grandkids. It was crazy. Nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her sugars, and she loved her dark-skinned grandchildren. Her dark-skinned boys, oh, my goodness, she just dope, dope, dope. Oh, Boopy and them, shit. Couldn't do no wrong, shit. You better not go tell on Boopy. You get your ass whooped for telling on Boopy. Ain't that some shit? You did what? To my who? Uh, come here, girl. <laughs> I was like, what? But he, but it was, <laughs> he did it. She didn't give a damn. Uh-uh, I don't want to hear that. Uh-uh, come here, come here, come here, girl. I'm like, damn, granny. Uh, so he just, get, I said, so you can just do whatever you want. And she give me again. That ain't it. But you just don't come in here blabbing about, really. I said, Lord, have mercy. Never mind. Never mind, old lady. I ain't finna fool with you. Uh, here. Boopy, just go on and do what you've been doing, shit. <laughs> but I wouldn't play with Boopy no more. I ain't play with you never again. You, you done with? I'm done with your black ass. Fuck it. Uh, it seemed like you can't do no wrong, and I'm not finna argue with her. Mm -mm. Let me move around, shit. But yeah, she was crazy about her. Um, yeah, that's how it kind of goes, though. You know what I mean? I always feel that, especially uh, black women, they always cover their sons so much. Way more than they covering their daughters. Y'all know that? Their daughters can go through hell. They don't really seem to care. But that son, they are there to his rescue. You know, they put their cape on, S on their chest. And they they run out for their grands, for their sons and grandsons. But your uh, daughter, mm, not so much. Ain't that crazy, Crystal? Ain't that nuts? But they have a weird dynamic, sweetie. They have nothing to do with you. But y'all, um, I'm gonna let y'all go because I gotta get busy. I gotta get back to work. 
But it was fun being up here this morning, this morning, this morning. Y'all have a great day, okay? Um, Becca Man Jr., I ain't seen you in a minute. I hope that you're still here. Um, please, Becker Man, just understand that I know that the whole town is not uh, garbage, okay? And if I said that, I apologize. I don't mean that your whole that your whole town is trash, okay? Um, it's probably a hard place to grow up and come out of, but I mean, you did it, and a lot of people, other people did it. Um, I think I think you are right with me. Especially Baker, man. You see this shit? Lord have mercy. Dialogue with me, TV. Damn, dialogue with me, TV. Let me tell you something. The way you write, you want more than friendship out of damn Baker, man, girl. I see you, girl. You are digging. You on. You are digging on Baker, man, girl. And I ain't already told you what it is now, but it seemed to me like you want to dig on Baker, man. I ain't told you, girl. Stop that. Especially Baker, man. You see this shit? Dialogue with me, TV. I told you, I'm kind of possessive. I don't want to be possessive. I'm not, I'm not possessive, but God dang it. Um, I, I see that you really digging on Baker, man, though. Yeah. Fatty, but I think it starts from the plantation. It starts from the house nigga and the slave master's children being light-skinned and getting privileged. And um, we'll talk about it on the next one, okay? Fatty, I'll be back tonight and we'll, t we'll dive in a little bit more on this because this is a subject that, uh, and I'm going to talk politics tonight too, but Blizzy, you're not welcome with your crazy ass. You a kooky. And I, li I listened to that live. I said, damn, you wasted a lot of my time with that dumb shit, Blizzy. I don't know if you were drunk or what the fuck is going on with you, but nigga, you wasted my time and I can't let you do that. But we'll talk more on this subject because this is a serious subject. This is a, a real cancer in the black community, this colorism shit, because there's so many hurt, hurt feelings uh, about colorism uh, that really hurts. I mean, trust me, the pain is real with the colorism shit. When you um, are shunned by people that you love the most, by something that you can't even control, which is the tone of your skin now, they... Uh, <sighs> Look, y'all, I don't know, but if y'all look at my picture, y'all see my picture, y'all see it look kind of like little light undertones. Uh, my grandma used to always talk about that. Because it, it, when I was born, I was born really, really light. I have a light spot on the back of my, I ain't going to say where it's at, but it's um, yellow, okay? And it's kind of like a little bit of birthmark. But a lot of guys I date, dudes I date, they say, golly, where'd you get that from? I'm like, well, I was born kind of light, and then, you know, I got darker. I'm really not. And, and then I even had a nigga tell me, because I was talking about black people and our, and our rights. And he told me, you're not even dark. I said, what? He said, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. You appear like you, like you sister soldier and shit. You're not real black. You're not dark black. I was like, well, damn, nigga, but I'm still black. What the fuck you mean? Girl, we, John, we have so much shit in our, in our shit that we got to work out. Uh, colorism, texturism, nose, featureism. We have so much shit in our in our uh, toolbox that's a problem for us, y'all. Seriously. You got motherfuckers telling you that you're not dark enough and child, please. Good morning, Foxy Brown. Seriously. We, we especially yeah, old school black folks, very colorist. My grandma, my grandma used to be seventy nine, and she was very colorist. I'm telling you, um, uh, all my life I, I would come, I show her my report card, cause you know every six weeks you get your report card. Well, if I got like uh, A's and B's, I want to show it off. So I'm telling everybody I got it. I don't know. My grandma didn't give a shit. Now, my sister's over there in CD category getting her ass whooped because she's fucking up in school. But she rather give her hugs and kisses and don't give a fuck about my report card. And I got straight A's and B's. What? I got like one B and all A's. And she really just shunned me over there. I, I mean, I got so many. Well, I could really talk and talk, y'all. Y'all know that? 
So I could really talk and talk about that shit, about colorism, uh, futurism, and texturism. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had my aunt do my hair one day. She said, stop crying. It ain't my fault your hair is nappy like this. She told me that. Your hair is, it's not, it's not my fault your hair is nappy as hell. Shut up, girl, because she, my mom, you know, she wet my hair before she combed it um, and grease it, but not her. She just started straight combing my hair with that hard comb. She didn't care that I was tender head, nothing. And she told me it's not her fault that my hair is nappy as fuck. And, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Swear to God, I mean, I was working at this one place. I was doing phone, doing phone sales. Okay, this is the early, early so fly trying to finish school and find yourself and needing money. So I had a job. I was doing call center work. One of the ladies I worked with, she was like a caramel color lady, you know, a little bit lighter than me. But she saw my sister get out the car, and then she saw my youngest sister come along with her. They were coming to pick me up. And my sister said, hey, sis. And they called my name. And I said, oh, yeah, here, yeah, yeah, here, okay. I'm, and I told them, I'm almost, I'm almost, I was on the phone call. I said, I'm almost done. And she's like, who are they? I said, oh, that's my sister. And then my little sister got, my little sister got out the back seat. She said, she damn near passed out because my sister's light skin. Y'all saw her, the one that was dancing at the, on the video at the, uh, at when we listened to the saxophone and all that good music and shit. The one in the uh, burgundy, she was dancing, and that's my sis. She damn near passed out because my sister is light-skinned. And don't you know she ran up there? Oh, my God, your sisters are so light and pretty. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know you had beautiful light-skinned sisters like this. We looked at her, and we just looked at her. My sister said, well... Um, okay, my sister didn't even entertain her. And my little sister said, that's so rude. <laughs> she said, she old rude, dumbass woman. Yeah, but you know, no, this, this is just shit that would happen. Oh, I know you had two pretty light skin. And this one's just high yellow. Ooh, you so pretty. Ooh, ooh. Just going on and on. Old, old stupid black woman. Just dumb and ignorant. Oh, and this other one, you real red, huh? You a red bone. Ooh, ooh. My sister just rolled her. My sister hated this shit. My sister E, um, the one that, that that I'm a year and two months older than, we're close. She couldn't stand that type of shit. My sister, because my sister never talked about us being uh different colors and shit. And it never it never dawned on us. Like we were sisters. Hell, we slept in the same bed together and shit. Hell, we were sisters. Y'all know how it goes. Shit. And you got these dumbass fools. Yeah, and I work with this woman. And, you know, the next day I came to work, I didn't speak to her at all. I gave her the ice grill and the ice shoulder. And she came to me, hey, girl. I said, no, no. I said, I don't have anything to say to you, lady. Go on. She was like, what's wrong with you? I said, woman. I said, first of all, you embarrassed me. I said, you came out there talking about my sisters being light-skinned. They don't care about that, I said. And you really made them uncomfortable. I said, no, I just don't like that. I said, we just don't like that. We're sisters and that's it. And we get enough of dumb shit like this. We just don't like it. My sisters and I, we really didn't like that shit. Like, bitch, don't worry about who light and this that. We ain't, we ain't tripping us, so why are you? Seriously, I had to go through that with people. That shit, we have to deal with. But we're going to talk about this tonight because this is a real good topic. And I want to expand on it and where it comes from. And why do we still perpetuate this? And like I told y'all, all my sister's husbands are dark. And I mean dark as fuck. Chocolate men. None of them are light. None of them. All of my sister's husbands are dark. Okay? All three of them. One blacker than the next. And, and that's no bullshit. I'm not capping about that. That's a hundred percent true. If y'all could tell me why them yellow girls and why them red girls love them dark niggas like they do, I wanna know because they sure do.
Yeah, Foxy Brown. Uh, my nephew was super light. He has he has these weird copper colored uh, eyes. They're just a different kind of brown, real unique. And um, a lot of people thought he was mixed for the longest. Now my sister is red as can be. In fact, my mom used to call her Palakio because her legs get real light, real light in the wintertime. You know, she got to wear a lot of pants and shit. Because my sister's cold nature. She hates being cold. You know, so, you know, in, light, in the wintertime, you get naturally, you get lighter because there's less sun on you. And do you not know that them stupid ass people kept asking, is he, oh, his dad must be white. And even, even my nephew asked me when he was born, he was like, Aunt oh, Tamika, is his dad white? I said, I could have said the same thing about your crazy ass when you were born. No. Hell, you were born with green, with blue eyes, remember? His eyes are still, his eyes are very light brown. Uh, he's real light skinned, but I was like, no. I said, do you know that there's just such thing called light skinned blacks? But yeah, they thought he was, they thought he was mixed. And they kept thinking he was mixed for a long time. And still they ask, is, is he all black? Oh, is his dad white? Because, you know, they want those. What? Peanut butter babies. Y'all know what they call them. They sure did think he was, um, uh, light skin. they thought his dad was white. But no, his dad is his dad is the same color as he is. It's just another red bone. Two red bone people made a red, uh, yellow sun. That's all that is. You know what I mean? Yeah, your mom had all dark men. They love dark men. But we'll get into it later because I'm going to tell you why they like it like that. It's so they kids can get some color. Yeah, because when you're light skinned or you're mixed, they don't want, you know, you're walking like two lines. And are you lighter because, you know, are you passable? We'll talk about it. We'll talk all about it. We'll talk about that in politics later on when I come back later on tonight. You guys have a great morning. Y'all stay blessed and never stressed. And y'all be careful out there in these streets. Take good care of yourselves. Uh, Baker Man, I still love you. I hope you're not gone. I ain't seen you in a minute. I don't know where you at. You really get upset about Brunswick. I don't know why. I mean, it's, I mean, I know it's your hometown. I get upset about Austin too, but I think y'all take it way too personal. But if y'all look at the representation that y'all have on here for the last few days, um, you know. Yeah, I'm not blaming the whole town, but I got to respond to somebody else's text messages that left me this morning so i gotta get with it y'all but y'all have a blessed day we'll talk about this colorism and shit later on today we'll get with it thank you for the hearts thank you for the love uh, i appreciate each and every one of you and thank you rochelle uh for the cash app i'll check it out and i want to thank you again okay all right y'all have a great day see y'all later on bye bye bo let's go bo and i finna go